just out of curiosity, I'm going to measure these bearings up. I just want to see. I guess it ain't going to focus, is it? There you go, American Modus. I'm just, I'm just curious. Obviously, here's the front one. It's the widest. The back one that you saw me pull out, the rear one, which was number five. The reason it had so much gack on it is, if the bearing sits here, there was still that much of the block. Then you had the uh, welch plug sitting in the back. So obviously that's going to build up with sludge and shit. And we drove it out this way, so it was just scraped and all. But um, you know, I'm just curious what the sizes are. I can measure the cam too, but I don't have the new cam. Um, I was asked what the specs are on the cam. Um, for this particular application, we're going to go with the ComCam 280H, which is um, 280 stands for the overall duration, which is a number that you can't really use to judge a camshaft. Um, and I'll tell you why. Let me just get a pen. Okay, so if that's a cross section of your cam with your lobe, if you measure it from here to here, and then from here to here, you can find out what the actual lift is on it. But how they measure the duration in the cam in degrees is obviously when it starts on the ramp. Now, here's why you can't use that number 280 as a guide. You could have a cam that has a 280 and you could have a cam that's 270 and the 270 actually holds it open longer in a way because when the camshaft will say it's spinning this way comes around then you got the lifter against it from where it starts to come off that imaginary circle is the lift now how fast it opens the valve till it hits here is the ramp speed okay if you have a car that has a roller cam in it so you have a wheel here the ramp speed goes up pretty high it stays open a long time and comes back down okay but the amount that stays open here is obviously less than here and here okay if you have a flat tap of cam which doesn't have a roller they can't make this go straight up and down, so they have to curve it. Like that. Okay, so the profile is totally different. That's why a roller cam makes more power than a flat tappet cam. Because they can make the valve, when it goes to open, they can make it open immediately. So instead of the valve opening slow, the valve opens quick. And the same thing on the ramp speed coming down. They can hold it open longer, 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 then drop it. But meanwhile, it stays open the same exact amount of time, except instead of it being open a couple thousands, couple thousands, couple thousands, it goes right to open. Okay, it's not a straight up and down wall, there is a curve to it. But that's why when you ever see a picture of um, a roller cam, first of all, they're made out of steel instead of cast iron, so they're a different color, but you'll see the big wide lobe. If you try and do that with a flat tap, it the corner of the flat tap will dig right into here and destroy it and actually destroy the lifter and it actually destroys the lifter bore see now Chrysler was wise Chrysler put a bigger lifter in and by putting a bigger lifter in a wider lifter you can actually change the profile of the cam and it'll accept it it'll accept a it'll accept a faster ramp so, who was as wise as Chrysler? AMC, because they use the same lifters. So, and there's, there's still controversy on that. They do use the same lifters. Um, they're the same part numbers in the aftermarket. They say the factory ones are slightly different. Uh, that's debatable. But, what they do is, instead of having the number for the 280, you have all your number. I'm trying to hold this camera, hold the paper, hold the pen. You have all your numbers at 50 thousandths. So that's at a zero. And that's a 50. So that means as this cam turns, it rises the push rod. We'll use that as an example. 50 thousandths of an inch. Then it's just like putting an X there. Then they close it. And 50 thousandths before it stops moving, they put an X there. And they measure that amount of degrees. That's a much more accurate number. Than using the 280 or the 270. 
okay? And if you're into camshafts, you'll know what I mean. Because you can look up when it's 280 degrees duration, mm -hmm. and the 50 thousandths doesn't even come close to someone else with 280. Mm -hmm. But this particular camshaft is 280 uh, straight across. Okay, so that means it's 280 on the intake and the exhaust. The 50 thousandths duration on this particular camshaft is 230. Okay, the lobe separation, so if you have the next lobe, I can't draw it, this thing actually, the tip is gone. So if I draw the next lobe for the intake and exhaust, and the center to center is 110 degrees apart. The closer you make that number, okay, the more of a rough idle and the more the camshaft handles on the upper end of the scale. The more you spread that apart, okay the smoother it is and the more it'll have something more like in the mid-range the lower end okay and if you look at some of your non-aggressive cams uh, that crane used to make and all these guys used to make these angles were always cut on a 112 and a 114 so if you bought a cam that was 280 or 290 or 300 degree and they cut it at a 114 it would idle like a cam that was like a 270 or a 265 Okay, and you would never get the top end out of it. Okay, so there was no top end in it the way they did it. So, it was good for mid-range. And, that's just the way it is. So, to answer your question, this cam is, the one we chose is the Comp Cam 280H. H stands for hydraulic. It's a flat type of cam. It's 230 at 50. Okay, and it's 4.90 lift at the valve. A little under half an inch lift so if you keep the lift in the, around the half an inch zone they can understand your times in this on my engine by 1.6 so I forgot what it is it's, uh, three I think it's point three hundred and seven or eight I'd have to look it up to get to 490 if you keep this under a half an inch you keep the ramp speed pretty fast on a four hydraulic cam. It's once you start bringing it up really high that this ramp speed, the actual angle of the lifter into the ramp becomes a major problem on a flat tappet cam. It doesn't matter if it's hydraulic or if it's mechanical. So that's when you start to have issues. They make them. They like them, but there's a, definitely a longevity problem with them. So, and uh, it can start to destroy the lifter bores. So it puts a massive side load on them. So, if that answers the question, the cam that'll be going in the 401 is nowhere near this. The question was, is the comp made a 280, okay, and they made a 270. This is 224 at 50, this was 230 at 50, this was 490 lift, this was 480 lift, they're both cut on a 110. The question was, is I know I've used the 270 many, 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 many times. Let me just close garage. I've used that 270 as small as a 327 and as big as a 454. And the small the cubic inches, obviously the choppy, the idle. And in the 327, that cam sounded nice. It uh, the car did not have power brakes because of the application, but. It was pretty snappy. I had it in a 400 high output Pontiac motor in there, and the throttle response was ridiculous. The guy couldn't have been any more pleased. Um, and in the big block, the big block, the idle was still what they would classify as choppy enough. It wasn't just a boop, boop, boop. It had a little bit more than that, but the, uh, the bottom end in it was ridiculous in that one, too. So I never. Oops, there I am. I never used the 280. I've used the 292. Now the 292 is 244 and about 520 on the lift. They still hold back on the lift on it. But the 244, that extra 14 degrees over the 230 is big. And the extra 20 degrees over this is massive. And that has what they would class, they classify as a radical idle. And, uh, 
I've used that can. That's a no power brakes can, period. So the question was, was, was I able to use this can? Because this can will wake up anything. Was I able to use this can and still run power brakes? That was my question to the guys. Not out there in YouTube land, into the people dealing with the same exact engine. Because if someone uses a can, first of all, it's, it's how you perceive it. You could put a cam in the car and you could say that, that that cam's too small. Then you hand it to somebody else and they're like, why is my car shaking? Okay. So I don't go by that. The question was is to my guys was who you who has used the comp 280 cam in a 360 with my compression ratio, my this, my that, my stall, and whatever it was, and what were your results? And 99% of the people answered the question the way I wanted to hear it. One person, just his answer was he didn't dislike the can. He said that the 270 was much tamer. And for his driving application, he was more satisfied with the 270. That's all he had to say. So it wasn't even a negative thing. And he didn't answer the question about the brakes. Everybody else had no problem with the power brakes whatsoever. The people that are running the cam. Um, so that's the camera that after some discussion with Junior that's what we chose because originally I was going to go with the 270 and I don't think the 270 would have I don't think the 270 would have been satisfying enough and especially knowing that the 401 is just sitting there so if you're not going to get enough satisfaction out of all the work you just did you're always going to say to yourself well let's just rip it out and put the 401 in we're not ready for the 401. Okay, the 401 is going to get a little bit more high-tech stuff in it. I'd really like to go with a full roller setup in that motor. And that gets very costly on an AMC. Um, you know, anything AMC is ridiculously expensive. So, uh, whatever you Chevy guys spend, just double it, and I bought it used. That's pretty much it. Um, except for cams, you know, put used cams in. I'd only put a used cam in is if, if I had the used cam with the used lifters in a match set because then it doesn't matter. But I'm not a used cam with new lifters type of guy or anything like that. So with all that said, I don't know if that answers any questions to anybody. But um, I would like to say I've been watching Tom Noble. It's night and day how that hood fits if anybody's following Tom. Because the original hood he put on the car, which I think was a unnamed or he doesn't know the name he doesn't know the name he actually had to widen it you know with rod and he also had to widen the um what do you call that the upper valance i guess that would be between the two fenders in the front in front of the hood um and then he switched brand names to all metal direct and it seems like the width is right on he doesn't have to add anything i know he's still working on trying to get the gaps correct well, to his satisfaction, but it's amazing how two parts for the same car could be two different widths. And I'm sure if you added those two together, how much he added, it's got to be somewhere. I I would think I forget now somewhere between three sixteenths and a quarter of an inch total added to the hood. You know, between both sides. So, yeah, that's that's a lot. And, uh, okay, so this is the first cam bearing. If you measure it, which I'll do, now we're not looking for an exact measurement here. You got about two and a quarter. Now I'm going to go right to the fifth cam bearing end. You watching? That's how much the difference is. And every one I measured got a little bigger, bigger, bigger because I started with the fifth one. So if you put them side by side, you could probably, if you wanted to, get this one inside of that one. That's how much short it is. So that's number one. That's number two. Three. Four. And five. I know it's impossible to tell on the camera, but they make it they make a pyramid or a cone. So, kind of hard to put them in the wrong spot. <laughs> I'm sure somebody has. So, 
basically it's the only reason I did this I mean even if I I knew what the first one was I could have guessed that they all went in size order after that I just want to know because what happens if they boxed mine wrong and I'd like to know before I go to the trouble of putting them in um, we're gonna be heading out to the model club meeting shortly we could see Mike and some of the guys um, and uh, we'll be back on this thing uh, tomorrow night tomorrow night I'm gonna start doing the scrubbing hopefully get that done uh, this weekend looks like it's gonna be a washout so we'll be working on this bad boy all this weekend I have nothing else to do just watch the grass grow which is doing awesome guys that grass I planted is doing awesome so with that said guys I'm calling it everybody have a good night